Hello everyone, this is Jag. In this video, I'm going to cover five vegetables that you can grow in summer and then over winter to grow next summer. And these five vegetables are peppers, eggplants, okra, kale, and tomatoes. Now, these are considered as annuals in many parts of the world because it gets really cold in winter and we get frost and these die off. However, these are actually perennial vegetable plants that will keep growing year after year if they are kept in a tropical region or a tropical climate. So if you can protect them from frost and, and freezing temperatures, they will make it through the winter. So let me show you each one of these vegetables and how to protect them over winter to overwinter them and then keep growing them year after year. Now before we begin, I must mention that this only works on vegetable plants that are perennial by nature. It won't work on vegetable plants that have a very short lifespan and are actually grown as annuals such as corn, squash and cucumbers. So it only works on these vegetables that I'm mentioning that can actually have a longer lifespan if you meet the conditions to keep them warm and actually provide them all the resources to have them survive over winter. Now, if they were planted in a tropical climate such as Hawaii or any other tropical region, you won't have to actually bring them inside. You can just leave them out and they will keep growing over a period of years. So, they are actually considered perennial vegetables. So, let's get started with peppers. Now, here's a pepper plant that's been producing a lot of peppers. This is Serrano chili pepper. Now you can apply these techniques on both hot peppers and sweet peppers. So the serrano chilies, jalapenos, bell peppers, it works on all kinds of peppers. Now this is a second year plant because I actually transplanted it from my previous home onto our property here and it's been surviving. So it made it through the winter and now I planted it here in spring and this is the second year that it's been growing. So I'm going to save it again this year and have it keep growing for next year. The preppers stop growing when temperature dips below 45 degree Fahrenheit. So as soon as the nighttime temperature dips below 45, you must protect your pepper plants. Now if you live in a warmer climate, if you live in zone 10 and above, you can protect your pepper plants in place. You can actually put greenhouse fabric on top, greenhouse in plastic. I made a separate video on how you can make five very low cost greenhouse and, and protect your plants that way. You can even put like a plastic tote on top and that will protect the plant. However, if you live in zone 9 and below, you must take the plant out and bring it inside. So let me show you how to do that. These chili plants, they are kind of slow to start. So the first year, by the time you start harvesting, it's almost at the end of summer. So it's really beneficial to overwinter these for the next year. And the next year, they will produce a bountiful harvest of these chilies. Well, look at these nice chilies on this plant. Okay, first of all, I'm going to harvest all the chilies from this plant. So, remove all of the chilies. This also has some flowers, so this might produce for another week or two, but our temperatures are dipping around 41 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit, so we have to bring it inside. So, it looks like I got all the harvest, all the chilies from it, and now let's prune this plant. To prune this pepper plant, first I'm going to remove all the suckers down here. So all of these lower stems I'm going to get rid of. There you go. And then I'm going to remove all the top foliage as well. Remove all the dead wood, so there's a dead wood right there. Oh, some more peppers. Well, this one never stops giving pepper, so I'm going to be keeping this plant for quite a while and let you know for how long it survives as well. So give it a good trimming. Now there's no right or wrong way to prune a pepper plant because it will just come back next year. So you don't, some people keep a Y. I really don't have Ys in this one because there's just lots of stems that actually grew over, over the last year and this year. So. I'm just going to remove any side stems, some suckers and any top foliage to reduce the size of the plant for easy storage and for it to boost growing next year as well. There you go. So there's, this is where I'm going to stop. I'm going to keep at least that much you know, stem on the plant so it has a really early start next year. All right, so now I'm going to dig the plant. I'm just going to dig around the plant and you can actually cut some of the roots, that's okay. 
because we're going to downsize this plant. Here you go. Go underneath and just pull it up. And there's the plant. So this actually has a really good root structure. It's quite healthy plant. It's a little bit bigger plant. So we're going to pot it in a bigger pot. So here's our pot. I also have some potting mix in here and I'm going to put the plant right in here and then top it off with some more potting mix. So let me get all of this potting mix in here. There you go. Now this plant is ready to be taken inside and I'm not going to add any fertilizer to this because you don't want to provide more fertilizer to this plant over winter. It's not going to grow much. We just want it to survive over winter so that it can grow next spring. Now, I use some potty mix. If you bring it inside your house, you might get some fungus gnats. And the way to get rid of fungus gnats is that you can use hydrogen peroxide, mix it with water and water your plants with that. However, it will also kill all the microbiology and microorganisms in your plant, in your soil as well. So that's a, one of the routes you can take. I have a separate video on five beneficial uses of hydrogen peroxide. And I also mentioned that using hydrogen peroxide kills microbial activity in the soil too. So it's very good for sanitation purposes, very good for killing you know, fungus and bad microbes, but not good to use all the time in your garden because you want good microbes and good healthy living microorganisms living in your soil. Now another way to get rid of fungus gnats is to actually put a two inch layer of sand on top of your potting soil and fungus gnats will have trouble laying eggs in there so they won't you know you won't get inundated by fungus gnats that way either. However I'm taking this plant to our greenhouse so I don't have to worry about that we have lots of potting soil in there and if we do get fungus gnats you know I, I deal with them with neem oil, neem oil or I usually use hydrogen peroxide sometimes to sanitize uh, my greenhouse so I already do that so let me bring this into my greenhouse and let me show you the rest of the plants that you can overwinter too. Now before we move on to eggplant and okra this is a bell pepper plant this is a sweet pepper so the process is the same just harvest all the peppers from it. This is a smaller plant that I plant a little bit later in the summer so it didn't grow as big. However, we can save it and grow it next year. So I'm going to prune it just like I did the other. Get rid of most of the, the foliage. And this one does have a Y. So keep that and get rid of all the stems. This is the first year plant so it doesn't have too much stems. So this is probably what you will have. So get rid of all the other stems all the dead wood if you see any but this one doesn't because it's a first year plant and once you reduce the size of this we can dig it up and then pot it and bring it inside if you have a smaller chili plant like this one you don't even have to prune these plants you can just dig it up put it in a container and bring it inside i started this one in late summer in july and this one didn't get to be this big However, it's now just starting to produce flowers. This plant hasn't given very many chilies yet, but I'm going to bring it inside the greenhouse and I'll get to harvest chili in winter and also overwinter this chili plant to plant early next spring. So here's the eggplant plant right here and it also has this little eggplant. We did harvest quite a few eggplants from this plant and this still has some flowers and it is doing well. However, our temperature is dipping below 45 degree Fahrenheit and this eggplant won't do well if temperature grows, goes below 50 degree Fahrenheit. So I need to get it inside if I want to make it survive. Otherwise, it's not going to survive out here like this. Now, unlike peppers, I don't have to get rid of all the flowers or the eggplants or all the foliage. I can just dig it up, repot it in a pot and bring it inside of a greenhouse or you can bring it inside your house as well and set it next to a window and keep growing. This way, I can still harvest this eggplant when it becomes bigger. So again, I'm going to dig around the root ball, loosen up the soil. Eggplants do have extensive roots. So as you can see, it has quite a bit of roots. So I'll be careful not to disturb it, but it'll just be fine. It's not like okra where it's going to get a big shock from root disturbance. Oh, the roots have gone deeper. So here's the eggplant with all the roots. Now let's transfer it into a pot. All right, so I got the eggplant here and I'm going to 
I reduced the size of the root ball just a little bit to fit inside the pot. Going to situate it right inside the pot, level it off completely with some potting soil, press it in so there are no air pockets in there, and then bring it inside. Now, even though I'm bringing all of these plants inside, they still need sunlight over the winter. So, if you're bringing these plants inside your house, put them right by the window where they receive sunlight. Or you can put them in the greenhouse where they receive sunlight as well. Just make sure the temperature does not dip below 55 degrees Fahrenheit for all of these plants, except kale. And they will make it through the winter and you can replant them in spring. Number three, okra. Now, okra plants become huge. I have some growing out in the front of the property and they're about five to six feet tall. That's how big they get. Now, I planted some here under the shade and they didn't grow as big. And look at this okra plant. It's only about 18 inches tall. This is about two feet tall. And these did produce okra, but okra need full sun. However, I'll be saving these to grow next year. So if your garden receives a lot of shade or partial shade, you won't be able to grow as much okra. But what you can do is save your okra plant at the end of summer and then grow them next summer. The process is the same for okra plants as well. Just remove all the dead leaves, harvest the okra that's growing, and then snip off the top, snip off any leaves that are down below. Just keep a couple of leaves and then we can dig up the plant and pot it. So once you have quite a bit of root ball and quite a bit of soil with this okra plant, dig underneath it and pull it out. There you go. This is our okra plant right here. Now let's pot it. All right, so I'm going to put the okra plant in this container, being careful not to disturb the root ball and then top it off with some potting soil. Again, no fertilizer, and I will bring it into our greenhouse, but you can also bring it inside your house, but be careful about fungus gnats. Okra plants that receive full sun grow much bigger and taller and produce a lot more okra. Let me show you some of the okra plants I have up in front. So this is the okra plant up in front and this received full sun, up to 15 to 16 hours of sun every single day. And this is taller than me. This is up to six and a half feet tall and this is loaded with okra. And we harvested a lot of okra from this okra plants and lots of other plants that we have here. And okra was in high demand with our family, friends, and quite a few people that came in to purchase okra as well. So we harvested pounds and pounds of okra from these plants up here. So this is how big they can get. However, if you are in an area where you don't have full sun in your garden, then you can overwinter your okra to grow next year and get a head start like I mentioned earlier. Or if you do get full sun, you don't have to overwinter okra. Just start your seeds early in February and by March and April, you can plant the seeds outside and they will get huge real fast. The nighttime temperature for okra should be about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as this temperature starts dipping below 55 degrees, okra plants start to die. Now I'm letting some of these okra plants go to seed. I'm just not picking any of okra. And you can let it go to seed and save the seeds from okra plants as well. And you can do that with other plants as well, such as uh, bell peppers and tomatoes I mentioned. Now kale is a biennial plant and it will survive for at least two years and it is frost tolerant as well. So kale will tolerate temperature up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 12 degrees Celsius at night. So daytime temperature is above freezing and nighttime temperature, if it does be dip below freezing, kale will tolerate that. So the kale plants that I grew last year got hit heavily by frost and they shriveled up just a little bit. But as soon as the sun came up, the kale plants started perking right back up and we started harvesting kale as well. Now, even though kale plants tolerate frost, their growth can be stunted from frost and the quality of the leaves will suffer. So to protect your kale plants from frost, just cover the kale plants with a plastic tote and you can enjoy fresh leaves even when there's frost. So if you live in an area where it does dip below 10 degrees Fahrenheit, such as Canada and Alaska and other parts of the world, and you get heavy snow, you can protect your kale plants with greenhouse cloth or greenhouse fabric, or you can also dig up your kale plants and bring them inside and then replant them outside in spring. Tomato plants are also perennial by nature, and if grown in tropical regions, they will just keep growing. However, frost kills them off. Any temperature below 45 degrees 
kills off the tomatoes too. Now, tomatoes are really not a vegetable, they are a fruit and they grow big and bushy. And it's really hard to transplant tomato plants when they get this big. So here's how you overwinter tomato plants. What you do is you take a cutting from a tomato plant, remove all the leaves from the stem, only leaving a couple of leaves on the top, and then put the tomato cutting in water to root. After a couple of weeks, you will start seeing the roots on this new cutting. Then all you do is plant this rooted cutting into a pot with some potting soil and put it inside your house or inside a greenhouse and let it survive over winter. I did this last year. I overwintered a cherry tomato plant. I made a video about how to overwinter tomato plants as well if you want to check it out. And the cherry tomato plant inside produced a lot of tomatoes as well. So we actually harvested cherry tomatoes inside of our house. And then when the spring came, I basically transplanted that big cherry plant. It was about two and a half feet tall. I planted it into our garden and got a really head start and I harvested hundreds of cherry tomatoes from that tomato plant. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you can overwinter these five plants and you can get a head start next spring and start harvesting these vegetables in March and April. And I'll see you in another video. Hello everyone, this is Jack. In this vegetable, I'll cover five videos